and she wrote him every single day. That is incredible. He saved all the letters. Wow. And she, she then turned the letters into a book. It is, it, it, some of it is very personal. Um, uh, some of it talks about social justice, um, talks about, the thing I loved about the book was and I'm going to do this 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 evening as I moderate this uh, this discussion. One of the things I'm going to ask people is how many of us know someone who's in prison. Yep. I did this at a at a previous uh, meeting. Everyone raised their hand. Yep. Whether it's a family member, a friend. That was my second question. How many of them were family members? Wow. Everyone kept their hands up. Um, and the book hit me. Because I have a, a, a nephew who's incarcerated, and he's a namesake, and I didn't know how to talk to him. I didn't know what to write him about, what to talk to him about. And this book, she just, it, it is so personal. I don't think she ever thought the letters would be published. That is sometimes the best books, mm -hmm. because people don't, aren't, don't write letters thinking that the world will read them. And um, she, even letter writing in itself, in itself is. I mean, is yeah, because it's a lost art now. Yes. Everything now is what uh, one hundred and forty characters right, right, or whatever right. it is. And and he and sh and it, it it is it is just mind boggling the mm -hmm. things she talked about. Um, and 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 she talked about health insurance. How she and Reverend Jackson don't have health insurance. I was amazed when I heard that. And they are, and how they were getting older. Uh, she talked about, she kept him informed, um, and that was one of the things she she thought was necessary because when you are incarcerated, you're sort of in a bubble, mm -hmm. and you really don't know what's going on in the outside world, and we don't think about that. And she kept him informed, kept his spirits up. That's important because I can imagine that she kept him going with she those did. letters. She did. She did keep him going with those letters. He, when I interviewed him on the show, um, he he also talked about uh, uh, how uh, what, it, what was the word he used? Uh, uh, objectification. Okay. Now, what that meant was that he had to keep his mind going. So when when he would m have to mop a floor, he pretended as if he was dancing with his wife. It, 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 it's those kinds of uh, d discussions, and um, I think it's going to be fantastic. I mean, she is her own woman. I mean, Jacqueline Jackson is no shrinking violet, and most people haven't had a chance to hear her. That's true. Mo you know, she, she, no, most people, and she does not play. She's been through a lot, obviously, and uh, this book she just laid her soul out. So... I'm hoping, and what we're going to do, you, I saw you interviewing all these young people, mm -hmm. so they're going to be there. Oh, good. And then Jonathan Jackson, Jesse Jr.'s brother, mm -hmm. so he's going to also talk about from a brother's perspective. But the one thing, you know, you come out with, and, and that is, and it's just the honest truth, there's no love mm -hmm. like a mother's love. That's true. No love like a mother's love. But every day, she sent a letter every day. And he, he in the interview, he talked about how while they had mail call in the uh, prison, mm -hmm. there would be men there that wouldn't get letters. Mm -hmm. And every day, uh, Jesse Jackson, Jesse Jackson, he would always have, have a letter from wow. his uh, mother. They um, say no matter what you do, your mother will always be there to support yeah, you, no matter yeah. no matter what you've been. Well, through. I look when when I was growing up, I knew that from my grandmother who reared me, my grandparents. Now my grandfather was different. Mm -hmm. Boy, you get elected. I mean, you get elected. You get arrested. Mm -hmm. uh, I ain't coming to get you. Wow, <laughs> that, that was tough love. <laughs> that, that was, was tough, tough love. love. And he'd be the first to come. <laughs> and to be honest, to be honest with you. But okay. uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna do this nice. evening. But I've I've been coming to the A. Philip Randolph uh, conferences, Chief, for, for years. And um, 
I wouldn't dare say no to a Philip Randolph conference and or Kayola Brown. She 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 calls you answer. Well, we appreciate you being here. Oh I know no, I'm looking forward. Clayola to it. appreciates you being there, and we'll be there tonight. Oh, you'll you'll uh, trust me. You'll uh, looking forward to it. This will be fascinating. Great. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for stopping by. Oh, we appreciate my, my it. My pleasure. Thanks for doing this. This is interesting. Clear. Look at this. Look you at know, that. this is this is really great. <laughs> We're trying Good to get the word you. out to the people, Good. all the union members out oh, there. Oh Lord knows we got to get the word out because it's crazy out there now. It is. I mean that Tucker Carlson thing that he oh. said that. There's no such that white supremacy is a hoax. I mean, Martin Luther King said something, and it's one of my favorite quotes, and it's not, I have a dream. He said the two most dangerous things on the planet, mm -hmm. sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. And let me tell you, when it's caught in the same, the, both are in the same person, we are, in, I mean, he just emboldened white supremacists. It's not a hoax. And we have to make sure that oh, our yeah. voices are heard loud and clear. And get your butts out That's to right. vote. That's right. And we have a lot of these young people who are just turning 18. Th that's right. And some new voters out there. They, so. they got to go vote. Everybody's got to go vote. We have to. Yeah. So. Hey, thanks for letting me come by. Thank you. We appreciate it. All right. Appreciate it. Well, we just heard from Joe Madison here on Activate Live. So we are actually going to continue with a few things before we go, but we want you first to join the conversation. Okay, let us know if you are an APRI member. If you are a member of the A. Philip Randolph Institute, are you, have you been to one of the national education conferences before? Comment now to activate your voice on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. You can even use live chat on YouTube, even if you're watching the replay. Now we have some other things going on this week as well. Also starting this week is the Asian Pacific American Labor Alliance's conference. Their theme is Rights Under Attack, Rising Up, Fighting Back. You can get more information on the website, apollonet.org. That's the 15th biennial convention taking place in Las Vegas, Nevada. And we'd like to give them a shout out as they begin tomorrow. We wish them the best of luck. We have some anniversaries coming up. Happy birthday or happy anniversary to one of our own, chartered on on August 7th, 1913 in Cleveland, Ohio, IAM District 54 turns 106 years old today. The district services more than 14,000 active and retired members and oversees 16 affiliated local lodges throughout Ohio, West Virginia, and Northeastern Indiana. Well, Elizabeth Gurley Flynn was born on this day in Concord, New Hampshire. Flynn was a labor leader, often called the rebel girl, she was an activist and a feminist who played a leading role in the industrial workers of the world, IWW, the Wobblies. Flynn was a founding member of the American Civil Liberties Union and fought for women's rights and women's suffrage. And on August 7, 1978, then-President Jimmy Carter declared that the Love Canal toxic dump disaster posed a federal health emergency. The presidential directive marked the first time that federal emergency funds were used in a situation other than a natural disaster. So residents had spoken out and fought back about illness near the abandoned canal in Niagara Falls, New York, and it showed how a community could come together to make their voices heard. Well, we remember author Toni Morrison, who passed away Monday at the age of 88. She once said, I tell my students when you get these jobs that you have been so brilliantly trained for, just remember that your real job is that if you are free, you need to free somebody else. If you have some power, then your job is to empower somebody else. And this is not just a grab bag candy game. You may have been seeing posts all across social media with uh, Toni Morrison quotes because she had such an impact on so many lives. Well, we have an exciting show for you next week, so make sure that you stay tuned. It will be the third edition of Activite Latino, our Spanish show, all in Spanish. Edmundo Osorio will host on August 14th, and he will try to bring you a remote interview previewing the Lachla National Convention. That will be taking place in Philadelphia, August 15th to the 17th. So we are so excited about this show next week. Um, spread the word to anybody who speaks Spanish that Activite Latino is next Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central, and noon Pacific time. And if you like what you've seen and heard today, please share this video, and we thank all of you who already do. We'll see you next Wednesday, or at least Edmundo will. We'll be there too.